pa 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 hello seller jammies welcome back to another episode it's so glad you've come to join me sitting here by the fire reading stories of sellers from near and far today we have a friend of mine named Kevin King you may know him since he's constantly on the conference circuit always up there on stage delivering his uh, southern charm to audiences around the world telling his story that's a bit controversial 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 uh he has some ideas in this space that disagree with a lot of what you hear from gurus and such uh i'll let you make your own judgment about it but i'll say that he's certainly seen plenty of success with his strategy that's really boils down to hyper focus and i mean it's the extreme end of ignoring shiny objects and you'll see what i mean when you when you get to the episode delivers nuggets of value tells a compelling story really fun guy to talk to we've spoken side by side at a number of conferences both physical and digital at this point and consider him a buddy so i hope you guys enjoy this interview we are live on Seller Jams podcast. What's up, guys? I'm here with Kevin King, who's become a legend in this space. He has an awesome story to tell. He speaks at conferences around the world to inspire other sellers, being somebody who's done it himself. The crazy thing that I learned about you, Kevin, when we were at the conference together in Hong Kong was that, if I remember this right, you're still a one-man show. Even though your business has grown really big, you're still straight up just one guy right that's it yeah i i run everything straight from my uh from my house uh everything uh in my, from my little home office or if i'm on the anywhere i've got an internet connection i can do business pretty much i mean that's i don't crazy. do i don't do every little thing myself but i i don't you know i've been there in the past where i had uh in other businesses where i had 16 20 people working for me in an office you know uh, and, and I just don't want to go back to that. Um, and so, you know, some people in this business, uh, it's all about, it's competition. It's how big can I grow my company? I'm trying to grow a 10 million or 50 million or a hundred million dollar company. But the bigger you grow, the more pains it becomes, uh, or more troubles oftentimes it comes. And if that's your goal, that's great, but that's just not my goal. I don't want to go back to that. I'm, I'm all about, I don't create a business and then live a lifestyle. I live a lifestyle and then create a business. So my business is based upon the lifestyle I want to live. So I value my freedom. I haven't uh, worked for anybody uh, ever. Uh, ex- well, when I, let me rephrase that. Since I was 16, I worked at McDonald's. And 17, I delivered pizzas. And that's the only two times. You know, I'm, 50, uh, I'm 50 now. And that's the only, so over 30 years, I have not worked for anybody. I haven't gotten a, filled out. I don't even know how to fill out a W-2. <laughs> uh, or one of the right are. So I'm, I'm a little bit different than the average person who's been working a corporate job and wants to uh, to quit uh, and, and go out there. I've traveled the world. I've been to 92 countries. You know, so I've already I've done a lot of that stuff. So my goals and motivations are a little bit different. But and uh, yeah. that, that's okay. It's each person that's doing this business needs to decide what what is it you're trying to get from it. Uh, is it uh, and so many people kind of just uh, you know they they quit a a day job or a job that they hate and just create another job that that's and they they may or may not love and maybe even more work. So yeah. I, I'm not I'm not about that. Now I've heard that story so many times where like you you quit your nine to five and then you got a uh, a six to eleven like six a.m. to eleven p.m. like job exactly. because you know you end up working like two or three times or five times harder than you did in your nine to five job and suddenly you have even less of a life than you did before. So what's the point? And some, and some people are okay with that because they. They're doing what they, you know, in theory, they're doing what they want. They don't have a boss. They don't have someone telling them they got to do this. So they're doing it by by choice. But a lot of times it becomes, um, you know, it, it's not a better life. Um, and so and a lot of times when you're starting a new business, you got to do that. You know, I had to do that in the beginning as well when I started selling FBA. You know, it was it was some long days and, and put in a lot of work. But once you get the, the machine running uh, and you get the car built, it, it kind of drives itself. Yeah, well, that's, uh, in a lot of ways, that's, and you just got to put gas in every once in a while. And so that's that's the beauty about this is I've never seen anything like this business. You know, people are always saying, "Oh, it's too late to sell on Amazon," or "I'm going to throw in the towel. This doesn't work. It's too competitive. Too many Chinese guys coming in doing all kinds of crazy stuff." And yeah, that all that that's all true. It is there are there is 
a lot of crazy stuff going on, but I still say that this is the absolute best business model out there. If you value your freedom and you want to scale something extremely quickly uh, on someone else's uh, coattails. Yeah. And that's actually another, con- I mean, one of the things I love about you, Kevin, that I realized like immediately once we actually connected, because we crossed paths a number of times, but we never really connected until Hong Kong a couple months back, is that you <laughs> you are very not ashamed to express your sometimes quite controversial views and you just really just frankly don't give a fuck. <laughs> like that was <laughs> that, clear. That, that, that's true. Sometimes it gets me in trouble. I'll, yeah. I'll say what, whatever, whatever I think. And a lot of times it's not what's being preached out there or what's being said or what people are, you know, are saying to do. And because a lot of times it's just, it's bullshit. It's not for everybody. It's not, it's not right. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that, that I think you, you say a lot that's controversial, especially in this space now is that you advocate for folks in this space to just focus all their efforts on Amazon and not distract themselves with other, other channels. You, you like your yeah, I mean, the big the, the big thing about some of the other quote unquote gurus out there is you you've got to create a brand uh or you got to get off get off amazon because what if amazon you have all your eggs in one basket what if amazon shuts you down well i can tell you for 99.9 percent of the people out there if amazon shuts you down and you're selling on walmart or you're selling on jet or ebay or your own store you're still screwed uh it, it doesn't matter uh it's not going to help you sell your company for any more any more money by being off Amazon unless it's more than about 25 or 30 percent. Uh, you know, so it's, it's adding some sort of a uh, very significant amount and then it will add some value. But building a brand is great and there's nothing wrong with building a brand, but that's a different business model. It's a completely different business model. If you want to start a new t shirt company or you want to start a new, uh, you know, line of pet stuff or whatever and you want to create a brand great but i i'm i'm an advocate of like use what's out there now use amazon to actually prove out a product use the built-in traffic use the built-in systems prove it out and you may have to dabble a little bit maybe you know you you want to do a dog your, your your passion is dogs or something you're doing dog stuff but then you figure out you know the opportunity on amazon is not in dogs it's in a whatever baking or whatever the heck it may be whatever it may be and so you pivot into that you know the the guys that start um you know plumbing supply companies that are making pipes and widgets and whatever for plumbers you know that's not a glamorous job but they're but the ones that are successful are doing it because there's a man there and and it it it, it makes money and it gives them a lifestyle or a, uh, or whatever whatever it is their goal is so i'm a big advocate of going on to amazon and and figuring out what works and take advantage of that system, generate some money, generate some, refine your product by looking at the reviews that come in or, or, or whatever. And then you can use some of the data, at least for now, Amazon still provides some of the data. If you're a third-party seller, you can download that data. Um, you know, Trying to get those people to switch over to buy from your Shopify site or to buy from you is going to be extremely difficult. Uh, most of them won't do it, but at least you can create customer profiles and 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 do lookalike audiences and things like that on uh, on Facebook and, and Google. If you want to actually start building something on your own, that's a long process. So I, I don't. I don't. I, a brand is not a logo. Some people think you know, stick it, creating a cool logo and sticking it on a product is a brand. That's not a brand. Um, so I'm a big advocate of s- screw the brand thing right now. Um, I mean, if you want to do a brand thing, go build a brand, but that takes a lot of money in most cases or some significant luck, uh, right place, right time. Uh, and it, that's not the thing for most people. Um, yeah, it depends on the stage that they're at, that they're at as well. Like it's for some, it's really key. What is the old saying that being too early is the same thing as being wrong? You know, it's that almost applies here. Whereas you have very limited resources, especially when you're just starting out in the first year or two, uh, and especially you know in the first couple months or couple quarters, you can't be distracting yourself with things that don't have short term payoffs um, at the wrong time. Like you said, it's based on your goal. It's like if you if you're trying to build an empire, then that's and and that's your goal then that determines how you spend your time. And then, yeah, you should really be focusing on on building a long-term brand and establishing ways to increase the overall value of your, your company. But if you're you know, just starting out and you need cash flow to begin with, you can't be focusing on things that will only pay off two, three years from now. It has to be things that have immediate impact. And you know, to, to your point, it's you have to, when, when you're doing things yourself, outside 
of the Amazon ecosystem, there are a ton of things that Amazon's already built that you now have to rebuild. Like there, you Amazon gives you so much when it comes to the fulfillment, the the traffic, the eyeballs, you know, the the place where people actually go to search for products. You have to kind of rebuild the engine outside Amazon uh, when when you're trying to go that route. Exactly. I mean, it, it, yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's the beauty. It's like most people that are getting into this, into the Amazon space or selling third, uh, selling uh, private label products or whatever. Most of them are not experienced business people. They haven't run their, they haven't run big business in the past. You know, just like you just said on the scaling. I mean, all the shipping, the customer service, the warehousing, the. I can tell you, you have your own Shopify site. You're not going to deliver something in a day or one day or two days like Amazon does. Not, a, not in most cases affordably. It's going to kill you on your margins. Uh, and, and customers have come to expect that uh, from, from almost everybody. They don't want to wait a week or two weeks to, to get something uh, unless it's just there's no other choice. They're, they're, it's so unique. There's no other choice that they may do that. But even you know, if you're running your own site and you have a things that people don't think about is the credit cards. You know, if you have a credit card processor and you're starting up on a Shopify, uh, I mean, Stripe is a little bit different, but for most people, you know, if you have a, a processor to scale that, once you hit a hundred thousand or 500,000 or a million dollars in sales, they start freaking out a little bit or holding some of your money or whatever. And like wanting some additional financial statements and all kinds of stuff. Versus if you do that on Amazon, you can go from zero to a million and never have a hiccup. Yeah, the infrastructure uh, in a lot, is there. A lot of cases. So it's it's all there. And so that's why I say take advantage of that. Figure out what works, what doesn't work by writing someone else's coattails uh, and by, by using the system that's already in place. Learn how to master that system. And then before – if if you're launching in the U.S., before you go – go to Walmart or wherever, I, I think you should go to Canada. Or if you're selling in Germany right now, you should, before you you go somewhere else, expand out to the rest of Europe, and then maybe then maybe come to the U.S. Go to other Amazon marketplaces where you can rinse and repeat the same process. Yep, that's versus certainly trying to the easiest way up. to expand. You'll add more money by if you're selling in the U.S. now by just going to Canada. I mean, Canada's about 5% of my my business, and I only have about half my products there, um, or 5% of my U.S. business. And it's easy. It's super easy. It's literally just Doing it took me a day to set that up and just send the stuff over. And I, I put z- almost zero effort into it. I, I focus on the U.S. market, but I don't do product launches in Canada. I don't do it. It's just just I just throw it over there. You know, I could put more effort onto it if I wanted to, but at this point, I'm not. And it's still, you know, 5% of what I'm doing in the U.S. So it's that's a better thing. That's way more than my amp, my Walmart business, for example, or my Shopify. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really interesting. And I think I do think with with my own brand that I um, I definitely tried to expand to too many channels too fast early on. I personally am certainly a proponent of of building a brand for for the long term. Like you said, it depends on the person's goals. But I I definitely recognize that I made the mistake of expanding in the wrong ways at the wrong times. Like if I was to do it again, I would have I would have done international expansion earlier. I wouldn't have messed with jet or retail distribution as early as I did because I didn't I had no idea how many res, how much how re- resource intensive it is and how capital intensive it is. Um, and how relationship focused it is to to jump into that world. And it took me Yeah, it's not something yeah, ahead, no, it, it took me way too long and way too many resources just to get what I ended up getting, which was just a couple boutique retail distributions uh, outlets going and, you know, never did get into Walmart onto Walmart shelves or, or big box retailers. It just ended up, you know, not being worth the payoff uh, for the time that I had at that point. Now, the different stage of the business is a different story. You know, there comes a time where depending on your goals, like you said, if you're you know, really trying to grow a, a massive empire, you need to think that way, you know, and you need to like strategize and like you have to be ready to put those resources in to, to expand to those new channels and really, really put resources into your brand. But there's a time, you know, for everything. But see, I know a lot of people, you know, I know a lot of guys that are selling five or $10 million a year on Amazon or off Amazon or, and I know other people that are selling a couple hundred grand a year on their own website or on Amazon and oftentimes, the people selling less are happier. They have less troubles. They're actually making money instead of having to reinvest everything constantly to try to keep building this empire. So it's all what your goals are. And so that's why, like you started this, I'm a one-man show. I, I focus on the core things. 
I do job out some stuff. You know, I'm not the guy doing my Photoshop graphics. Uh, well, I, I know how to do it, uh, but I, you know, or my package design, I'll, I'll sketch it and have someone else, you know, do that or produce some of the videos or whatever. So, but those are no, all freelancers that I, I just hire off of Upwork or, or somewhere else. It's not wow. people that uh, they're sitting sitting in my office. And give um, us an idea of scale. I, like how, how big is this business that you're actually able to run as a one man show like this? I mean, I mean, I, I have, I have one core business of my own that's, I've been selling a FBA for, uh, since 2015, August, 2015, the first product launched FBA. I've been selling on Amazon since 2000. Whoa. Uh, so Wait, I was the selling, year 2000, uh, 19 yeah, years year ago. 2000. Yeah. Dude, I've had a, I, I've never I have talked a, my, to somebody my, who's sold on. I didn't even know that was possible in the year 2000. Well, it started with, uh, I haven't, my account is, my seller account is so old, I get daily withdrawals. So I don't have to wait two weeks. I don't have 10% Oh, you were grandfathered in? Or, That's crazy. I'm grandfathered in. So literally I have a little button that, in my seller central account that I can just go in and click. And it works the same in Canada, because I guess it's because it's a unified account. But I just go and click it. And every 24 hours, if I want to take money out, I can, or I can leave it there and take it the next day or just let it cycle through. And every two weeks, they'll automatically dump it. Uh, but yeah, I can go in every 24 hours and make a withdrawal. And it's, if I do it before like 3 p.m. Central Time, it's in my bank the next day. That's wild. Um, so from a cash flow, that helps me. But yeah, I started in 2000. And initially, it was uh, I was using Amazon like eBay because Amazon would have a little button or they still have it. It says sell yours. Okay. So it's you know, like arbitrage. Something. So You're it, doing retail arbitrage. Yeah. So I would have a, I'd have a printer. Well, I wasn't, it, well, I wasn't trying to make money on it. I was just trying to recoup money. So if, if in my office is what, if we upgraded all of our printers, for example, or uh, our phone, uh, not phones, but printers or a computer or something, sometimes I would throw that up on eBay as a fixed price auction. Other times, I, I might figure I can make more money off, off of Amazon, or if it's a DVD. When I, at one point I upgraded on my my standard DVD collection to all Blu-rays, like I replaced uh, all my. This is back, you know, before all the streaming and everything, when people actually had to have a little disc. But I would upgrade my whole collection, so I would go on and sell the the used DVDs uh, on Amazon. You know, just as a just sell yours and just list it as used. And you know, it took all the two seconds. Someone else already had the listing, and I was just throwing on there. And so that's how it started. But then also I was doing, I have a, a separate business outside of, uh, that started outside of Amazon. That's a seasonal calendar business. So, uh, pin up, uh, calendars that go up on the wall, you know, as you pin up on the wall and stuff. Hmm. Uh, and that's a, a, it's a big business uh, for me from, uh, October to January. So some of the calendars I produce, uh, over in, uh, in, in Korea, like my landed cost is about $1.52 and I sell them for nineteen ninety five. That's a pretty nice margin. Uh, and so I was selling, a, and then I also have a, a, a retail side to that where I actually also bring in other people's calendars uh, all in the same theme. So it's very thematic and I will wholesale. So I have about 140 different calendars. Some of them I produce, some of them I'm just basically a, a reseller of. But the ones that I produce, I, I started selling them on Amazon back around 2000, 2001 through a program. There was no FBA or anything back then. It was called Advantage. And I think that might have even, I'm not sure, I have to look that up. That might have even been before Vendor Central. Dude, this um, interview just before. got crazy. I didn't know this story and I've never heard of these things. I don't know what Amazon Advantage is. I've never yeah, even heard it's of this. Called, it's for, Amazon, it still exists. It's for books, medias, and DVD. So you can't, it's, and it, the way it works is they issue purchase orders. Every, I, I, get, I get purchase orders during season, you know. When I'm out of season, there's nothing, but on Mondays and Wednesdays. And so they do their little forecasting and you basically send the stuff in on consignment. So they're not, they're not agreeing to pay. It's unlike vendor central where they issue a purchase order and they say, you know, we're going to pay you in 60 days for however many they take. It's not like that. It's basically on consignment. And so I send it, I, I was sending it in. Uh, and I've been doing that since 2000, 2001 for our calendars and it, it's grown, you know, when it first started, we might sell 50 or hundred calendars. I have three or four different ones, Tefer titles, you know, maybe maybe 50 of each one. And every year, you know, I, I remember even 10 years ago, if, if they, if I sent in 400, that was a good year. But this, uh, this last year, two years, three years ago, I actually quit using the advantage program. I'm still in it. But the thing about the advantage program is you don't get access to data. So they, ah. they place the orders uh, and you don't have a lot of control over listening. It's kind of like, oh, vendor, so it's Central. Just like vendor central, so, but they've grown from selling 50, in a, in a season for me to this last year, one of my titles sold about 6,000 in about three weeks, units in about three or four weeks. Holy smokes. Uh, but I switched that over uh, to, to FBA because I get the data. So now I can download all those customers who are buying this calendar 
uh, by you know you get to, they don't give you the email address or the phone number, but you can download their 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 mailing address. So I download that and I did a test this last year where I actually sent out my like, remember I, I said I, I have some that I produce and then other ones I I'm basically just a reseller of and they're all thematic, so they're all in this theme. So I have people that collect this 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 theme, and so uh, I've been I do direct mail. I still half of my business on that is for people sending checks and money orders in the mail what? You know, during during December I go to the mailbox every day and it's kind of like Christmas it's a stack of envelopes you know and I have a, a bigger mailbox than the average guy at the post this office is a- there's a stack of stack of envelopes in there and it's it's kind of like Christmas you opening each envelope and you're like okay has this one got a twenty dollar check or has it got a three hundred dollar check in it you know or whatever so that it, is a whole universe uh, people- that I have absolutely no connection to that is wild i guess that's maybe people that order that type of thing are more likely no to- it's the, not necessarily there's a let everybody that's young right now everybody that was born in the last 20 years or 25 years all they've known is the internet they've known nothing else and people say that retail is dead or that direct marketing is dead or that catalogs in the mail is dead there's nothing further from the truth one of the best things you can do in your amazon business is actually put a direct marketing element into it and that's what i was going to tell you here so i get those names and addresses now and so what i do every year uh, or I did this last year, actually, I, I tested it, is I mailed those people my normal, I, I do like a brochure, like a color brochure printed on paper. And I sent it through the post office, through, through mail, you know, I sent out thousands of them. So I added, you know, it's five, I did a little test, like 6,000 of these people that I bought off of Amazon, because I didn't have the early data, I've only had it from the last couple of years, and sent them this flyer. Well, what happened? My sales went up 30 to 35% on my what normal on calendar the flyer? business. It's just the, the covers of each calendar. It's basically 140 different calendars with a co- uh, with a picture of the cover and the title and the price. And do you send them? Is there and a little, link to your Amazon? Form. Like or no? There's no link. No, no link to my Amazon store. No, on this particular one. No, this one is. It has a link to my my store that I host on. It's not even on Shopify. It's on another older platform, uh, and it's a link to that. And then a mail order order form that you fill out with a pen and you, you stick an envelope with a stamp and you send it back with a check or money no way order. and who does um, this for you like who who generates the i do it you do it i, I do so it you actually collect I the money it. orders yeah, yourself I, and I, like you you go through them and yeah wow kevin that yeah. is how do how are you how do you come yeah, off so relaxed i don't understand how you're such a like <laughs> relaxed chill dude i've got it down i've got it down to a system i focus on the key things i don't worry about the little things and i i, I set up i set up little systems that will work. Now, I mean, I'm involved in that. So it's not something, you know, that I could sell. And at one point when my Amazon FBA business started doing really well and my my training stuff that I do with the Freedom Ticket and Illuminati Mastermind, all that started doing well, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to mess around with this little calendar business anymore. Uh, I'll just, you know, sell it off or whatever. But it's, so this last year, what I did is uh, I brought in a my wife's cousin, uh, he flew in uh, from uh, from Colombia. My wife is Colombian. He flew in from Colombia and stayed with us for, for That's right. three I met weeks, your wife. Uh, three months. Uh, for three months and uh, basically did all the shipping out of my garage. I mean, I don't even use Amazon for fulfillment for this. It ships out of my garage. And so he did He did all that. So I just basically opened the checks and take them to the bank and he did did everything else. Um, so it's, it's almost on autopilot, you know, and it, it makes me a six figure profit in a, a matter of a couple That's of months. Fascinating. So, I mean, I could, do you know other people in the so space it, that are using like the addresses from Amazon to do direct mail stuff? Yeah. There's some companies that specialize in it. There's some guys that have set up from, uh, that actually they, char- they I don't like what they charge. They charge a lot of money and most people aren't doing it right. But, uh, you, now that that's because I have a separate business outside that, so I'm able to leverage it. But sometimes people get this flyer and they don't order from from me. They're like, you know what? I I like to order from Amazon because it's easy. My credit card's on file. I trust them. I'm gonna get it in two days. So what do they do? They look at my brochure and they go type it, type the name into Amazon and order it from there. Uh, and so that that raised my Amazon sales this year too. So I was able to launch my calendars on Amazon uh, with with zero. PPC, zero launch, no launch strategy, no giveaways, no nothing, literally just put them up and, and generate six figures uh, between uh, basically Thanksgiving and uh, and the end of the year. Because Thanksgiving selling calendars the end of the year, like that's one milk. month. So yeah, one month so, you're able to yeah, generate like over a hundred grand no, with no PPC, no launch, no anything, just a direct mail campaign with addresses. Well, that direct mail campaign wasn't even aimed at. It wasn't even 
was there's a little bit more to it. The direct count, count mail campaign helped, but the, it wasn't aimed at driving people to Amazon. It's aimed at people send me the money, send me a check or money or go to my website. But just coincidentally, enough of, because a bunch of them originally came from Amazon. Uh, they they that's that, that's where they're going to go back to. That's why I say building a brand and trying to get people off of your off of your site and onto you is hard. So I got the benefit of both worlds there because people are going to go back to where they're comfortable with or where it's easiest. And so the, a lot of people aren't going to come over unless there's some compelling reason, like the price is way lower or there's some really cool special, if you're selling diffuser, some special oil they can't get anywhere else and everybody just loves the scents and you only do it through your site or something like that. Most people are not going to switch. I mean, back in the direct uh, old days, if you're old enough, you might remember publishers, uh, weekly clearinghouse and every year around this time right before the super bowl pretty much in january ed mcmahon the old johnny carson sidekick it depends on how old you are he would come on and they would do this like million dollar sweepstakes and they'd show a commercial where someone's showing up someone's house in the middle of the night knocking on the door and presenting them with a million dollar check well the whole thing the way he entered that was by by signing up for magazine subscriptions the whole point of that whole program was to sell magazine subscriptions for time and newsweek and all the magazines back at Reader's Digest, all the magazines back in the day. And those magazines would, would hope to generate leads off of that. And they would hope to be like, okay, let's now we have these leads. Let's turn around the next year when it's time to renew. Let's renew them, uh, you know, and we can make some extra money because they'll, now they'll be our customer and, under our brand. But most of those people didn't renew directly. Instead, they go right back to Publishers Clearinghouse and renew the next year again. And it's the same thing with Amazon. People think they can get their customers off of Amazon easily. And it's not easy. People, I mean, just think about yourself. How many times have you gotten something or seen something and you're like, let me go just check uh, and see if it's on Amazon because you trust them. They already have your credit card files. It's easy. One click. Yeah. You, gotta, you don't have to enter your address. No credit card. You trust them. You know for damn well it's going to show up. When they said it's going to show up, unless there was a snowstorm or something, it's going to be there. And if you have a problem, Amazon's going to say, no problem. Send it back. We'll give you your money back. You don't got to deal with anybody, or argue with anybody. It, it, People aren't going to change off that. Amazon's done an amazing job at, at, at doing that, and they've cornered that market. Yeah. And so it, it's it's hard to compete with that. That's why I say focus on Amazon, take advantage of that, and quit doing – most of the people that are teaching this building brand stuff are younger people. Do you see anybody that's 50, 60 years old that comes from the old school uh, that before this internet stuff's teaching that out there? No. Most of the people that are teaching that are in their 20s or early 30s, and, and most of them, to be honest, aren't – don't know what they're doing. Um, um, so you got to be careful. I'm not saying you don't build a brand. Like you said earlier, use Amazon and that can't lead to a brand and that can be your end goal. And that's great. But don't think you got to go do that stuff right away. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a, a that's a fascinating perspective, like to, to hear that story. So that, I mean, so does that bring us all the way up to the present? So we were doing these calendars um, via direct mail. You were, you had the Amazon advantage program, you since switched to FBA to have more control, and is that still your primary business? Does it? No, the calendar is that's, that's a, a side, side business. That's a okay. season. Of, yeah, I've got seven other brands on Amazon under my. Oh account, my god, that's a lot. Pet, pet, pet space, but I don't build out. You know, that's the other thing. Some people they go they go deep, long and deep, and so they need employees. They need VAs. You got a hundred, two hundred products. That's you know that that takes something to manage. It takes software systems. It takes people. I don't do that. I focus on, I have 15 to 20 products, a couple in each brand. And two of the brands I'm actually discontinuing because I, I did five initially and with the idea that one or two of these may be too difficult and I'll end up with three and I tried another one. That's on my own account. Now I'm about to start two other accounts with uh, two other people that are, are coming in uh, with some significant money. We're partnering on that to develop some other stuff with the whole goal to sell. And that's that's the next thing about this business is I think the biggest opportunity is not in building focusing your efforts on building a brand, uh, but focusing your efforts on building a, an Amazon business to sell. I mean, you said you've had Coron on the on, on your show before. You know, there, there's about eight different F brokers out there that specialize like him and, and selling oh, yeah. Amazon businesses. And there's about there's about a billion dollars out there in funding. I'm on the board of uh, advisors for 101 Commerce, which is uh, Richard, planning right? on, uh, they've bought their first nine. Yeah, yeah Richard. They bought the, their first nine, and they're planning on buying uh, up to, uh, 101 of them over the next uh, couple of years. And so, yeah, you mentioned during that, the conference uh, I mean, in, in Hong Kong actually that you, in your discussions with Richard, that he you actually gave numbers while we were up on stage together that he, uh, for a couple of the, the first businesses that One on One Commerce acquired, that they immediately 
increase their value and their revenue by by just simply expanding them internationally. Yeah, exactly. I mean, by economies of scale, by being able to, they have the money behind them to where they can say, we're going to buy six months worth of inventory uh, because we get a uh, it's we get such a lower price or per unit cost on the six months of inventory than it would cost us to to buy them a month at a time. Like me and you or some some guys starting, we have to kind of we have to cash flow it a little differently. So they got big economies of scale and they can afford to sit on it. It's actually cheaper to sit on it with the, the price discount discount, and then they can use that, and then they can go to you know most of us or maybe selling in the U.S. or maybe Canada. And the reason a lot of times we don't go somewhere else, it's either too complicated or we don't have the money. It's like starting a whole other business. You're going to go launch in Germany. You got to fund the inventory over there and you're funding the inventory in the U.S. And it can be a juggling act. They have the money and can do it. So just instantly by going over there, uh, they they nearly doubled the sales in, in a matter of... And so that's the beauty. But the thing is, they're looking for people who have a, have proven themselves. And so that's where the opportunity, I believe the best opportunity right now is in the selling your business. So like in my freedom ticket course for new people, I tell them, look, this is not a get rich quick thing. You know, you see lots of YouTube videos, lots of Facebook stuff, a lot of stuff out there, guys with Lamborghinis, you know, and all this, quit your job, quit your job. And uh, you know, go look at these screenshots. You gotta love the Lamborghini you know, guys. My student. <laughs> you gotta love the guys with yeah, the Lamborghini is. shots. That always cracks me up. But they'll show screenshots. Look, my student did a hundred grand, you know, in his in his first three months or whatever. And you get all excited, and you're like, "Holy cow, I can do that! I'm sick of sitting here in this job. I want to do this business." So you buy his course, only to find out in most cases they su- the they don't really teach you much. Uh, but what they don't tell you too is that hundred thousand dollar screenshot. Well, the guy actually lost right, about exactly. twenty thousand yeah. dollars on that because a hundred thousand dollar screenshot that's gross sales on Amazon. But they might have had to give away a ton of products at a negative loss uh, just to get that hundred thousand dollars plus all the other fees. They probably actually yeah. lost money and, and growing and so costs money they, too. They don't tell I you. Mean, how, are you a reader, Kevin? Do you read exactly books? I do, you you uh, should some. read the book yeah. Shoe Dog. It's like the story of Phil Knight in building Nike. Oh man, dude, uh-huh. you would relate. The uh-huh. whole time I was reading the book, I was just nodding my head. I was like, "Yep, been there. Yep, been there." The whole story of like, yeah, I've got that right here on my book. Oh, you shelf. do? I need to oh, I actually have great. it here. I just ha- it's a great it book. Yet. It's so, yeah. and the whole story, basically, the entire time, he's basically dying for the funds to expand the business. Like it just, it's really, it speaks to somebody who's run a physical products business who knows how capital intensive it is to continue having to up your inventory purchases to fund you know, the growth of the business, it just sucks more and more cash, the more and more you grow. It's, it's really, especially if on, if you're on a fast growth path and his, the whole, like Phil was his whole life, basically just begging to bankers to get more credit. Like it was, it was him burning bridges with bankers and having to start new relationships and just, you know, beg borrowing and stealing for more capital to expand the business. And and it's also a great story. It's, It's a great book. I'm not. I'm not have to read that. I've heard that from a couple of people. I mean, I definitely have to pull that down and try to read that. But the 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 thing I was going to say though is that if you come into this business, you know, about ninety percent of the people that try to sell on Amazon fail, and it's because they're either doing it wrong or listening to the wrong people or picking me too type of products uh, or going by some sort of formula that someone says it's got to be under this weight uh, between these price points, and everybody finds the same things. They don't differentiate the. Product. You mean I shouldn't start so selling I, I silicone say, look, spatulas, Kevin? Oh, uh, you could, you or could, uh, but, uh, you know, let's, you could probably throw up a pretty big <laughs> screenshot. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> well, let's see, see, see what your bank account yeah, screenshot exactly. looks like too, side by side. <laughs> but, uh, no, so I, I, I tell people, you know, treat this like a three or four year project. Um, so if you go into the first year, you're going to be learning and earning and you may actually lose a little money the first year. It's possible. Don't quit your job. You know, unless you got a big savings that you can live off or you live very, very modestly, take as little out of the company as you can. The second year, you're going to be optimizing. Maybe you're adding extra variations. You've kind of figured out what works and what doesn't work, adding some additional products. You get maybe hopefully have a little bit of extra cash. And by that time, maybe Amazon lending will loan you a little bit of money to help you grow or you can qualify for, for something else uh, or your family or friends see that, hey, this is actually working. I'll give you 10 grand, you know, to help you out or whatever. And then the third year, optimize it to sell. You know, that's when you're like, okay, work with a someone in the space or some people that specialize and help can look at your numbers and can say, look, you know, if you do this, this, and this, uh, next year, you can sell it for this much. And um, the multiples out there right now are anywhere from a low of two uh, to as high as for the smaller size business, like under 5 million in gross sales, 
to two to five. So let's say you are able in three years to build up to a million dollars in gross sales, which is, you know, 20, was it Amazon just put out a statistic uh, last week, 24,000 people or companies uh, worldwide sold over a million dollars on the Amazon platform uh, last year in 2018. So, I mean, if you can get to one, be one of those 24,000 and sell it for, you get the gross sales of just a million, you know, a lot of those guys are doing a lot more than that, but just, just to a million dollars, if you're doing private label, you should have about a between a 20 and 30% bottom line profit margin if you're doing things right. So let's just go with a say 25%. So that's about $250,000 in profit on paper that you're showing. Well, I can tell you that you're not putting 250 grand in your pocket. Uh, you actually may be putting, you know, five grand or 10 grand in your pocket because if you're doing it right, right you're exactly. growing the business and you're having to take those profits and put them back into to buy more inventory or get ahead of the game. But the beauty is you get to that point then you can go to someone like One on One Commerce or Coran uh, or some one of these other, uh, other guys that are in the FBA space and say, "Look, I want to sell this business. You know, look what I'm doing. I'm growing. I've built it up. They don't want to do. They don't want to get down in the weeds like you have, but they have the capital and the money, like we were just talking about with Richard, where they can come in, pay you maybe seven hundred thousand dollars. You know, let's take a three x multiple, say, it's, or two and a half x multiple, even pay you six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars." That's cash you're going to put in your pocket right then, and then they will take it and they they will grow it. You work with them for a month or two to help them in the transition. They'll take that and then they can grow it because they have much more means and capabilities than what me and you have. But the beauty is, you take that six or seven hundred thousand in this example. Maybe you pay off a couple of bills, an old student loan, whatever you have. Take a nice vacation with the the husband or wife, or girlfriend or boyfriend, and then now instead of starting with five or ten grand or whatever, maybe 20 grand you started with initially, now you can say, okay, now I got 50 grand or 100 grand out of this that I'm going to take. I know what the hell I'm doing. I'm going to go in and do this again and sell it again in two to three years. But this time, instead of selling it for 750, because you you know what you're doing, and you started with uh, more money, you can grow faster. Maybe in only two years, you can then flip that one for two to five million. Where else out there can you make that kind of return unless you hit this, get lucky in the stock market, or maybe some magical real estate investment, but even that's probably not, there's no better leverage and no better opportunity. And then if you want to build a brand, now you know what the hell you're doing. You know how e-commerce works. You know what people want and you get the money to properly build a brand yeah. and do it right. That is, I mean, that's, that's the dream right there that you just laid out. And it's true. I mean, it's, I would say, I think the, the beauty and the curse of this space is the accessibility. You get, I don't know if you saw the article that came out. I can't remember the publication, but a bunch of people were sending me links to this of this whole, it was an article about some guys in the space that were doing education. It was like, you know, sell on Amazon courses. And it was just a story. The, the title of the story was something like how to lose $40,000 trying to start yeah, it was. It was in the. It was. It just That's came out. It was one. in the Atlantic. Yeah, the magazine, so many people were sending me the that. Just like yeah, maybe wants to go know, look it up, knowing that I'm in the space, and uh, yeah, I mean. It's it's that's that highlights you know between what you said and that article in the Atlantic, it highlights you know the the beauty and the ugly, the the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of this space, and that it's so accessible that people jump in without realizing what a commitment it is. But then again, it's it, it actually is accessible to the sort of quote unquote every man, and if you're if you're smart and you prepare and you're actually dedicated to it, like does give you an opportunity that's very unique. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, there, there's a lot of there's some good courses out there, and there's some bad ones. You know, Amazing.com sold over 150 million dollars worth of courses, uh, and the the biggest in the space. That's a yeah, lot of freaking money. Um, other people, <clears throat> a lot of people will try this business model and they'll realize, I don't have the money for inventory. What can I do? Let me go make a course. Or other people try it uh, and it doesn't work too good. Maybe they get up to ten, twenty thousand dollars in sales, and their friends are asking them, "How do you do this?" And people are asking, like, "Oh, let me make a course." So you have like, there's probably literally a thousand courses out there from uh, Udemy or however you say that uh, to YouTube free stuff to. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry in your Facebook feed is saying, you know, make money online. Uh, and most of them are a total waste of time. But those people, some of those people are actually making more money off their courses than they are off of actually selling. So you got to be careful. Look at someone and see if they're really selling. See if they're still active. They didn't sell three years ago and they're still active and they know what they're doing. 
Uh, so if, if you, courses can be great, I'm not knocking, I have courses, but I'm selling. Um, and do I make good money off some of the courses? Yes, I do. Uh, but that's not my, my focus. Um, because one of the reasons I started the Freedom Ticket is because there's so much misinformation out there. There's so many things that are posted on Facebook as gospel and get parroted everywhere. And it's just, they're simply not true. So I want to teach people, look, this is, this is how the stuff works. <laughs> yeah. And this is how it works. And this is how you treat it like a business, not a get rich quick thing. And so I, I, I take a different approach to it and I go into detail. I don't just go over the highlights. Most people just cover the highlights because that's all they know. They don't know all the nitty gritty. And so I, I go through the nitty gritty and everything. So it's, it's a different approach, um, but there's money to be made there. So some people do that. Uh, and it, it, why not? You know, if you, um, if, if you know it and you, you could share and you can help others, then, then that's great. But yeah, you do have to be careful. And like I said, like 90% of the people that get into this business don't succeed because they're either following the wrong instructions. They don't think of it as a business. They think of it as a quit my job next week and get rich uh, and go sit on the beach and drink margaritas or whatever. You got to come into the right mindset. And it's it's not for, it's not for everybody. It is hard work. It's, it's despite what you may see out there. It's not easy. Uh, and it takes it. You got to know a yeah, little bit about definitely. a lot of things, especially if you're doing it the way you're doing it, where you got to wear every hat. But uh, Kevin, we're at the end of the time here. Thank you for uh, dropping the knowledge, telling the story. That was really crazy because I actually didn't know a lot of that stuff about selling back in the year 2000, which just is like way beyond the, like Jurassic when it comes to this space. People who are selling for like <laughs> four or five years are like viewed as you know veterans in, in this world. So that is, that's awesome. So it's, been, it's an honor to get schooled by a true OG uh, of, of the space. So thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for dropping the knowledge and, and telling that inspiring story. No problem, man. Anytime. Good luck to everybody out there. Yeah, Where, uh, where can they uh, find you if wishes. they want to hear more about uh, what you're doing and, and uh, you know, some of the educational stuff that you mentioned? Um, well, you can go to AMZ, like, like Amazon, like amzmarketer.com. And that just uh, right now just redirects to my Facebook page, but you can see links to other podcasts and stuff you can just listen to for free. Or if you want to, if you're in this space and you want to know a little bit, go to freedomticket.com. There's a webinar there. It's on a auto replay. You can sign up for that. And, you know, the, the second half of the webinar is, is going to, you know, t tell you about the course. You don't have to buy the course if you don't want to, if it's not for you. But I would recommend at least you watch the first hour because uh, it's solid training. It's not a bunch of hype and bullshit. You'll, you'll actually, even if you're selling right now, you'll learn something just by watching that first hour that you didn't know. Uh, practical, like step by step, not just high level. You know, Amazon's a great opportunity. You should sell. But like, do this, do this. Here's how you find the keyword. Here's how you find this. And it, it'll, it'll be very specific. So I recommend you do that. Um, but those are two of the better places uh, to go to check me out. AMZ, Market.com, right and Freedom. Well, thanks Ticket. again for coming on, man. Can't wait to see you in uh, Prague. And then I think again in, in Hong Kong after that, right? Yeah, I'll be in uh, Prague with you speaking over there. And then uh, I'm speaking in, uh, at Global awesome. Sources in uh, right, Hong man. Kong as well. Right on. Thanks for coming on. Cool. Peace out, everybody. No problem. We'll see you soon. Was I right or was I right? Now, I had a little bit of a conflict in my mind going this entire time while we were conducting this interview thinking, you know, uh, like whenever I'm doing podcasts, I'm trying to be like, you know, a journalist, like have journalistic integrity. And I'm thinking like, oh, I'm not challenging him enough. You know, going back listening to it, I'm thinking I should have I should have challenged him there, like made him prove his point. But uh, I just love talking to Kevin so much because he's, he's just a fun dude to talk to, good listener as well, that, uh, yeah, I, I just let him tell his story. And it was, it was uh, compelling and fun to, to listen to. I have one request for you, Seller Jamies. We don't have that many listeners right now. I'll be honest. So if you're listening, if you're hearing my voice right now, you're one of the few, the proud, the Seller Jammies. And... You know, since we're a small tribe, it's important for us to stick together. You know what I'm saying? And we could use a little bit of love if you could take literally 15 seconds, even if you type one word or maybe two words, love it. You don't even have to add punctuation. You could just say love it and add an iTunes review or a review on your podcast, downloader, listening app of choice. Uh, that would help us out greatly. Even if you just shoot us a message and say, hey, listen to the episode of Kevin King. Loved it, bro. At least that warms my heart because 
I like feedback. You know, I, I as evolved and woke as I like to think I am, I still get validated through external validation. There, I said it. All right, it's out there in the ether now. Anyways, much love, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this wild ride and extremely interesting discussion with Kevin. I will see you at the next one.